Does the name Brat Pack mean anything to you? Well, you're, if you're up on current Hollywood films, then it should. And you're about to meet one of the esteemed members of this group. His name is Judd Nelson. Uh, Judd Nelson is here this morning. I had such a wonderful night last night because I saw From the Hip, and I have to congratulate you. Oh, you. And I don't often do this, but that is a film everyone should see. It is wonderful. It has everything. It has great acting, great casting, a great story. I think you have great taste. I think I have great taste. I'm not just saying that. I really mean that. That was one of the nicest nights of the theater I've ever had. Great. And you must be thrilled with that. It was, it's in previews because it doesn't open until right, February 6th. Right, it opens 6th. February 6th right. at a theater near you. Yeah. What did you think the first time you saw it? Was it everything you wanted it to be? I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Really? I wait, I wait and see it. Um, with a regular paying audience, yeah. Oh, you will love their reactions. Oh, that's good, because they scream. Oh, yeah. hit her. <laughs> and let's talk about the rest of the cast. John Hurt, oh, terrific John Hurt. performance in this. And Davin, uh, uh, Darren, Darren McGavin. McGavin. Ray Walston. Ray Walston. Nancy Marchand. Nancy Elizabeth Marchand, Perkins. who played the owner of the paper on uh, Lou Grant. Lou Grant. Yeah. 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 Great cast. Thank you. Yeah, the Brat Pack. What do you think, Lynn? <laughs> you laughed when I said that. Yeah, I mean, the Brat Pack, it just seems like such old news. I mean, even the Indians have stopped talking about Custer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I you know, I would say that the most uh, reprehensible thing about that article, though, is it does portray my generation of actors as not taking our work seriously. Yes. And I would say that, first and foremost, we are very committed and very professional. And we're not like that generation of actors like the Lee Marvins and the Robert Mitchums that were out drinking all night and proud about those things, you know, showing up on the set in the morning need 10 cups of coffee to remember their lines and I don't think that's like us at all so sort of a shame and I think you proved something in this film Dan Monahan who had the lead in Porky's is your sidekick in the law firm and he certainly doesn't come off as a Brat Pack actor I mean it's it's a natural progression you were telling me earlier in the green room from the breakfast club to St. Elmo's high school college to this all right well now I can finally play my age which is I guess nice yeah you're 26 right I just turned 27 did you Ooh. Oh, geez. You know, well, maybe I'm too old for the Brat Pack now. Although I heard, I heard John Ritter and uh, Emmanuel Lewis were in the Brat Pack now too. So I don't John know. Ritter's a little old for the Brat Pack, okay, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know, not many actors tell their age. Really? No, they have a birth date and they never have a year. Collagen shots, right? Yeah. <laughs> no wrinkles for me. Yeah. I don't let's, smile much. You know. Let's tell everybody that you grew up in Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Went to St. Uh, Paul's Prep in Concord, New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. And uh, you hate Boston sports, I hear, right? No, I love Boston sports. <laughs> I love Boston sports. You know, and no one here is probably going to believe it, but um, I've been touring around pro uh, promoting the film, and everywhere I go, I say I'm a Celtics fan, and usually I get booed. Really? So now, let's hear it. Yeah! <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Not just the Celts. Oh, yeah, also the Red Sox. And I'm a Red Sox fan living in New York. That's that not easy. That was pretty bad. Was... During the series, uh, where there were was... several attacks on your apartment? No, actually, after game six, um, I went out to a bar, and someone came up and tapped me on the shoulder. You know, I turned around, what? They said, I hear you're a Red Sox fan. And I went, yeah. And they threw their drink in my face. Oh! I pounded him, though. You pound oh, pounded. good. Uh, very calm and not a violent guy at all, huh? No violence. No. You had good beginnings. I mean, you had you know, St. John's Prep, Stella Adler, to study with her for acting. Did you have advantages that you think other other potential actors and good actors might not have had? Well, I would say that the greatest advantage I had was that my parents were behind me 100% of the way. That they never got in my way when I decided to leave college after two years and become an actor. I, I think they ordered a, a CAT scan for me R to really? see if I had some irregular brain activity or maybe if I had any brain activity at all. <laughs> but, um, but that indicates they might have had a problem with yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> no, but um, so I would say that that was my advantage that the family has always been behind me. The family. Yeah. But that really helps, doesn't it? You have yeah. a family behind you. Without that, it's really, it's pretty tough to pull That's yourself true. up and do it. Hard anything. to do it on your own. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Your dad is a lawyer. Yes. All right, you play a lawyer, Boston-based law firm. Yes. And you sweep off the dust on this profession. I mean, you don't, it's not portrayed as the most wholesome mor uh, moral profession in life. What does he think of that? Well, in a way, I. I did this movie for him, I guess, since I didn't grow up to become a lawyer. This is the next best thing. So I think of this as a loving ode to Dad. <laughs> so he better like it. He read the script. Yeah. What and did he, he liked say? It. I mean, he thought that there were certain um, licenses taken because it's a drama and it's a comedy. Not necessarily everything that happens in the movie could happen in a, in a courtroom. But I don't think that that makes it bad. Uh, the central conflict of the film is what happens when you follow your professional ethic and you find yourself in conflict with your personal sense of right and wrong. And it's set up against the legal profession because that's a perfect sounding board. What happens if you're a defense attorney and you have to defend someone that maybe is guilty? 
But I don't think, I mean, sure it pokes a little finger at the legal profession. Every profession needs a finger poked at it once in a while. Look at the presidency. You yeah, know. but I just hope it doesn't promote cynicism with, oh, no, I'm not going to touch that. You notice I ignored that comment. Well, he's but, my favorite actor, <laughs> though. Yeah. Reagan, man, what a performance. <laughs> Longest running show. What a guy. Uh, do you know how many young women called here when they found out that you were going to be on the show? My mom and sisters? Your mom and your sisters. That was uh, it. That's that was three it. then. No, amazing number of women called here wanting mm. to know if they could come and see you. You have, a, you have a tremendous popularity of a generation that will grow up with mm. your vehicles. Well, I tell you, there's, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> no, seriously, though, that, I mean, that must feel good. And it must, I, I don't know if it matters to you as an actor, does it? Oh, I mean, it's, it's very flattering but it's, it's strange because it makes me a little self-conscious you know does it I mean because not that many people notice me growing up and I'm no different now so it's strange that people wouldn't notice me now I feel like why are they looking at me is my fly down do I have toilet paper on my heel <laughs> you know, you know? Yeah, I just had a flashback to the film because this young lawyer is and admits it he's absolutely he's fascinated with the limelight he loves yeah. the limelight and he has to give that up for ethics yeah. you know uh, you won't have to do that in this business or will you Hopefully I won't. I mean, hopefully I won't have to give, give anything up. How do you avoid it? By the parts you choose? I don't know if you can avoid it. It is a public profession, I guess, that uh, my mom used, uh, always says, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. So I guess it is one of those things that you have to deal with, but I guess as long as my family keeps thinking I'm a jerk, it'll keep me sane. <laughs> I keep your feet on the ground. Yeah, That'll right, do it. Right, yeah. Do you think you're sexy? Because obviously a lot of women do. No, I think that I've been fortunate to play roles that are maybe dangerous, you know, so maybe that's appealing. I think it's more the character, not me. Yeah, except yeah. people confuse the character with the real person. That's true, because it is a profession of illusions. If you, if you do your job well, you get confused with the product. I mean, the guy that makes Crest toothpaste, no one thinks that he's toothpaste, you know? So it's strange. There might be yeah. a few out there who think Whoa. that. <laughs> you never know. Pretty good explanation. Huh? How about women in your life, your bachelor? Yeah. Well, I, I asked this question, I've asked it before. Are they asked, at your feet? I mean, are they... Are, are they at my feet? I, this is not the oh, guy I don't like to ask this question. Of, I, you know, I like him about <laughs> there, not really. I knew it before it was Sorry, out of my mouth. Sorry, you gave me that one. You gave me that one. Before Let me ask what? it another way. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's live TV. <laughs> another way. A lot of women? A lot of women in your life? Or? No, no, not that much. I'm, I'm a little bit um, app, uh, apprehensive. Because it's sort of like, I guess if you were the quarterback of the football team, do they like you for you or because you're the quarterback? Do they like you for your fancy car or for you? So sometimes I think that they maybe like me for the job that I do. So I'm a little bit standoffish. Why are you going unless to... they're pretty. Yeah, unless they're pretty. Right? <laughs> then I don't care. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Why are you growing your hair? For a role? It just does it. Naturally, it's incredible. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. It just, you know, you don't... I, I, you know, that's the same question that my mom asks. Why are you going? Yeah, your hair? well, you know, I'm. You know, a that's really a sloppy look for you. <laughs> you know. Uh, no, you're preparing for a role. You're a stinker. You're getting me. You're preparing for a role, or is it just? No, no, it's sort of like. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, I'm gonna cut it this afternoon. Cut it. Okay. Your mother called me and told yeah. me to say that to you. Um, the the writer of this film, I I hope wins uh, an Academy nomination for Best Writing. I think it's a fabulous writing it job. It is really, it is really a strong script. It is. That it's is, so it's tight. definitely, that's his strongest suit. Was there change, were there changes that went on in the writing? Because a lot of people say that it happens with a film. Yeah. I think that uh, there were a lot of drafts to, to finally get the, quote, shooting draft. And then after it was cast, but before we started rehearsal, there were some other small changes made. Mm -hmm. And then during the rehearsal process, Certain lines are dropped, certain scenes are altered a bit, but no big changes were made. You know, I'm wondering, you shot the exteriors in Boston, and yet you filmed it in North Carolina and made it look like Boston. Why? Why not give the Boston Film Bureau kind of a leg up? Do you know the reason? Um, well, it's a film made by Dino De Laurentiis, and he has his own studio in North Carolina. So I think it behooves him to shoot it down there where there are you know, big sound stages. But we shot most of it down there, and we shot about one week here in Boston mm -hmm. to get the shots, you know, show the Charles, you know, pan up on the Prudential Center, <laughs> cut to North Carolina. <laughs> I, you know. but, but, you know, when you see it, you'll go, where is that building in Boston? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't remember that. But the interesting thing is it was written by a local lawyer, David Kelly. A lawyer Kelly. from Boston, who's from Maine, actually. Ha. From Maine, but yeah. he's with a Boston, big Boston firm. What's Fine the firm? Fine and Ambrone. Fine well, and Ambrone. Why Good law firm. If you're ever in trouble, give him a call. Right, but they gave him a leave of absence to do this. Why didn't he insist on 
on, on doing it in Boston? I wonder. Do you know? I'm not sure. Well, he's now a story editor for L.A. Law. So I guess that's why he had to leave and go to um, California. So look, the up and up, it just shows you what those New England kids can do, I tell <laughs> yeah. you. Don't we've, you love it? We've seen it. We've Celtics. Seen it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm still bitter about the Red Sox. I'm yeah. sorry. Where does Buckner live? <laughs> Where does Buckner live? Uh, <gasps> I don't know. I wouldn't tell, but I... North Andover. North Andover. Bill, if you're watching, how are you? <laughs> Oops.